This is Grandma Eunice. I want Uno to come on and listen to my grandson on the Stuart Media and Entertainment Network. Help me keep this boy out of trouble. Come on, cook with your microwave on Stuart Media and Entertainment Network. Grandma Eunice, bye bye. Boy, I thought you said Kirji was coming over today. <laughs> We're standing in the same place I can't understand why Your love went away I just have one question Ooh, where do we go from here? Dressing fancy Going out every day Our thing we still See the same But I don't know I don't know Where we'll go from here Never know, won't know. Round and round and round we'll go. Where we'll stop, we'll never know, won't know. Round and round and round we'll go. Where we'll stop, we'll never know. Welcome back to the Doug Stewart Show, 404-822-5467. You can also email me at Doug at the DougStewartShow.com. Today we are paying homage to Death Row Records. Uh, it was an American record company founded in 1991 by Dr. Dre, Suge Knight, the DOC, and Michael Harry O'Harris. Many West Coast artists were on the label, such as Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Tupac Shakur, The Outlaws, MC Hammer, Young Soldier, Sam Sneed, Michelle A., Jewel, RBX, The Lady of Rage, Danny Boy, DJ Quick, OFTB, LBC Crew, and the rap group, The Dog Pound, Gangsters. Yes, sir. Yeah. Death Row Records was making a hundred million dollars a year by 1996. Did you hear me? Death Row Records by 1996 was making a hundred million dollars a year. Praise his holy name. Damn. Uh, but subsequently, right after that, man, a lot of the uh, the artists on the label departed after uh, the whole death row and and uh, after the death of actually uh, Tupac Shakur. The company filed bankruptcy in 2006, and on January 15, 2009, was auctioned to entertainment development company Wid Iwike Entertainment Group for $18 million. Damn! 
you hear all these stories about uh, athletes losing all of their money. Death Row was making $100 million a year and was sold for $18 million. So when they say sold for $18 million in 2009, does that mean like they took ownership of all the, the publishing and all of the music and all of the tracks and everything like that? Because if that's the case, that shit is worth way more than $18 million. Uh, I don't know how that works, man. But, yeah, today we are paying homage to the great Death Row Records. <laughs> Top five. And I want to get y'all thoughts on this today, Stewie's. Top five candy bars of all times in honor of uh, Halloween tonight uh, or today. Uh, so the top five candy bars of all time. Coming in at number five on my list is the Crunch Bar. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can't beat a Crunch Bar, man. Chocolate with crisp rice from Rice Krispies mixed all throughout the candy bar. So coming in at number five on my list is a Crunch Bar. Um, and I always forget about the Crunch Bar, and I'll get it every once in a while. I'm trying to back off from candy. Let me just say that from the very beginning. Um, but the Crunch Bar, man, I probably have maybe one Crunch Bar a year now. Uh, so coming in at number five on my list is the Crunch Bar. Yes, sir. I don't know if you've heard about it yet, man. It just happened actually about 20 minutes ago. The Miami Dolphins. I want to see what Mocha Bella got to say about this. My man, Jeff Fox. Maybe I'll holler at Jeff and see what he's got going on down there in South Florida and get his thoughts on this team, um, the Miami Dolphins. But they've traded running back Jay Ajay to the Philadelphia Eagles for a fourth-round pick. Sources are saying Ajay had rushed for 465 yards on 138 carries this season. His uh, third with the Dolphins since being selected in the fifth round in the 2015 draft out of Boise State. In 31 games, Jai has rushed for 1,924 yards and nine touchdowns. So he had been very productive down there. Uh, the coach down there, Adam Gase, had uh, voiced some displeasure about the effort being given by a lot of these guys on this team after they got destroyed last week and lost by 40 points. So Ajay is gone. I'm trying to look at the backup. So the backup to Ajay, which I guess is who they're going to go with right now, is Damian Williams. Uh, running back out of Oklahoma, um, been in the league for four years right now. I'm not really – like, I don't really remember what he did in college. Evidently, he didn't do a lot because his name just doesn't ring out when I first hear it. But Damian Williams is the uh, number two back in uh, Miami right now, so you'd expect him to start. And on the depth chart, they also have listed Kenyon Drake, uh, the running back out of Alabama. Uh, second year in the league, 6'1", 211 pounds. Uh, running back, bruiser type running back, as well as got some speed or whatever. But they got him listed as third on the depth chart. Maybe they feel like Ajay uh, was a, a locker room cancer or something like that, and they just wanted to get rid of him. And uh, once again, Adam Gates talked about the lack of effort in this Dolphins team, <laughs> uh, you know, last weekend. Uh, so uh, they moved on for Jay Ajay. Now, what does that mean for the Philadelphia Eagles? Uh, you know, they already had Blunt at the running back position, who had started to come around over the last couple of games. So now they get a Jai, who's more like an every-down back. Like, like I always look at Blunt as a guy that could get the tough yards, but it's crazy. He breaks off some long runs, seems like, every once in a while. So now they just add more depth. You know, Jai clearly is a starting caliber-type running back in the NFL. So the Philadelphia Eagles right now at 7-1, and one, they got a good win this past weekend, man. Everybody talking about Carson Wentz possibly for MVP in the league right now. And they feel like that this is their chance. This is their time to get it done, I assume, the fact that they make this deal. And you can't never have enough depth. So, shouts out to Philadelphia, man. They absolutely are going for it this year. If you didn't know, if you forgot, maybe you have heard, maybe you didn't, but today is the NFL trade. And the trade deadline is today at 4 p.m. Eastern time. So expect to hear a bunch of other moves. Speaking of which, the other big move and the biggest news over the last 24 hours is the punk-ass New England Patriots find a deal for Jimmy Garoppolo. (laughs) 
which this deal doesn't make any sense to me at all. The 49ers have traded a 2018 second-round draft pick for the New England Patriots quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo. That's right, Garoppolo 25 is scheduled to become an unrestricted free agent after the season, which is crazy, uh, which means that he's going to be on the market or they're going to have to franchise a guy or they're going to have to give him a big-ass money. Clearly, if they made a deal for him in this manner and giving away a second-round pick, they should be ready or they should expect to pay top dollar for this dude. Um, That would mean Washington Redskins quarterback Kirk Cousins will have one less landing spot and free agency. All of the talk had been about Kirk Cousins from the Redskins, from the Washington, D.C. football team going to play for for the San Francisco 49ers because of the relationship between him and Kyle Shanahan when Shanahan was in Washington. Doesn't look like that's the chance, uh, or that's the case now. Garoppolo is scheduled to become an unrestricted free agent after the season. Uh, The 49ers are likely to keep him by signing him to a new deal or tagging him as their franchise player. They're going to have to do one of the two. The Patriots seem to have bought into the idea that Tom Brady, which he's been talking about a lot, and he's said it to anybody that will listen, wants to play into his mid-40s. This is a very, very risky thing for both organizations. This one is risky for New England because they're putting their faith into a dude that's about to be in his mid-40s in a sport where guys just don't play that long. Okay, uh, and Tom Brady, and also a super, super risky man, I believe, for the San Francisco 49ers that believed Jimmy Garoppolo after starting, what, two games when Tom Brady was, was suspended last year for deflating footballs, him and his, uh, his boys? And I think it was only two games. It might have been three games. Remember, he started the two games, balled out of control, looked fantastic, and then he got hurt. And that's when Jacoby Brissett actually came in and got a couple of starts before Brady was able to come back to play. So you, this almost seems like another boneheaded move that a bad team and a bad organization would make and putting all of their faith into Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, one name for you, Matt Castle. Really, Matt Castle. First of all, Matt Castle, or first of all, the New England Patriots have historically over the last 15 years had a very solid team, okay? A very solid team. I'll go ahead and say that. Now, the other thing about it is when Matt Castle did get his opportunity to start for the New England Patriots, when Tom Brady uh, got his knee tore up or whatever and missed the entire season, and when he left from New England and went to Kansas City, he was garbage, He was okay very early in Kansas City, and then he ultimately went back and digressed back to being garbage. You putting a lot of faith in a guy who you've only seen play a couple of games if you're the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, Um, and we've seen this before with Matt Castle going to the Kansas City Chiefs once again and... You know, looking horrible after a point in time. So very, very risky, man. I wouldn't trust Jimmy Garoppolo as far as I could throw his ass. So we'll see. We'll see. And I don't know. They got scouts and they got people that are in charge of making sure they make the right decisions on these type of things. But this is very, very risky, man. And then you think about San Francisco and the fact that they're 0-8 right now. These are the type desperate, reaching type moves that a lot of bad organizations make, you know, <laughs> they could come back to bite them. You know, bad organizations skip over Deshaun Watson, <laughs> okay, as their quarterback when he's right there, you know, for the picking. Bad organizations trade for a backup quarterback that started a couple of games and looked good and then suck ultimately. So, Tom tell, we'll see. When we get back from the break, man, we'll jump in the chat room, see what y'all got to say about all of this. We're getting your Halloween favorite candy bar talk today as well. And and we're paying homage to Death Row Records. Don't go back. The bu- uh, don't go away. The Doug Stewart Show. This is Keith. 
KC from the Kicking It With KC show. show. On the newly rebranded Two Live Studios Radio Network, we will continue to bring you the hottest, most interesting.